the white means for us is it threatens the uh, reserve status of the dollar, which now you can read every day with different countries, China, Russia, and others are saying the dollar is really not a very uh, good reserve currency anymore because uh, of the deficit which has to be funded with all this money that the Federal Reserve uh, is printing. They're becoming more and more concerned about it. What would that mean for us if we suddenly lost uh, the dollar as a reserve currency? Well, it would mean instant poverty. Uh, this is country. And this is what's so dangerous about this uh, entire situation. If something isn't done to reverse it, uh, and that's why I say that this situation could solve our problems for us. Uh, so that they all merge into one gigantic problem. See, with a $2 trillion deficit, we have no money to fund our, our imports. We're an import-dependent uh, country. We import 70% of our energy. What would we do unless we could force other countries to convert their currency to dollars uh, to do business on the world markets? What if we had to do that? What if we had to convert our dollars to, uh, to euros? or the Chinese currency in order to import any oil. Every dollar that we did that with would suddenly be worth 41 cents less than it is now. And it would take real money to buy this stuff. Uh, no one wants to sell their oil to somebody with a worthless currency. So it would be a very difficult situation. Also food, if you look at the grocery stores, it's hard to find something now that's not important. Even in areas like where uh, Joan and I live, uh, that's a farming-based uh, economy. Everybody's got a garden, uh, but you can't find any local food. It's all imported. Uh, you know, there's probably a billion onions grown within 10 miles of where we live, but you go in any store, and all the onions are imported from Mexico. We're food dependent on the imports, too. So all these things are coming to a head right now at this particular time. And so it's very, very uh, important that these problems be resolved. When there are solutions, they're just solutions that we're not going to take uh, for the reasons, I suppose, that uh, Dr. DeRosa pointed out to us this morning. I mean, this is why I told the people in Long Island when I was there a couple of weeks ago, if you had someone come into you and you ask that person, uh, that person said to you, well, look, I've got some financial problems. I mean, really, bad trouble, I need some advice, what would you tell me? And you looked at that person's condition, and his, uh, his expense side vastly exceeded his income. And he said, look, you've got to you've curtail spending. You've got to give back this new Mercedes you just bought. You know, you might want to think about selling this home that you can't afford anymore. And uh, you've got to start living without luxuries and just, just uh, uh, spending on absolute necessities until you can get your expense side down and your income side up, you can start reducing this debt. The government is no different. It's the same thing we should be telling them. Um, now that flies in the face of Keynesian economics, which says uh, when you're out of money, you spend money. Because that's what makes the economy work. Money is credit. So you have to induce people to, uh, to go into debt further. But most people in this country are tapped out right now. And so uh, all these banks are holding on to the money that we gave them recently. You may have seen just a couple of days ago, uh, several of these banks, I think it was five actually, uh, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, and some others, gave back $68 billion of bailout money. They were permitted to do that. The government doesn't permit every bank that wants to repay this money to do so, but it did these banks. Uh, and why were they able to do that? Well, because the money that we gave them in the bailout, they never did anything with. They just held it in their cash accounts, didn't turn loose of any of it in the form of credit. And the taxpayers, we the people, assumed their bad debt so that uh, their books looked so much better, their stock took off and skyrocketed. All this money came in and they used it to, uh, to repay the bailout money. And now we're stuck with the bad debt which we have guaranteed, now it's like $14 trillion worth of this uh, debt that the taxpayers are on the hook for. $14 trillion 
really means in the future. What it means for us is it's impossible to have growth when you have that kind of debt. You know, you hear these things like debt and deficit, but what do they really mean for people? They mean that in the future, if you're of retirement age or nearing it, uh, your retirement is going to be a lot less prosperous than you thought it was because the dollars that you're paid, which are finite, are going to be worth a lot less than you thought they were. Uh, it's going to make it very difficult uh, for your children and grandchildren to be prosperous in the future. Uh, it works kind of like this. Let's say that uh, you had a good job and made a good living and had a nice home in a nice suburb somewhere. And uh, every year you get a bonus at the end of the year, you know, from your work. Uh, but you have so much debt that you've built up. There's so many things that you pay for. Most of them have long since forgotten and collecting dust somewhere. Uh, but all of the money that you make above bare living expenses goes to debt service. And when you get your bonus at the end of the year, even if it's $10,000, that just goes to fund this debt. That's the life that you have to look forward to. That's where we are. Uh, and that's why there can't be any growth or prosperity. I mean, this is a commitment in America to, to a non-prosperous nation. Something has got to be done about debt and how it's paid before growth can restart and the economy can restart. Uh, that is the only solution. Uh, and so what it means is uh, there's coming a default in one form or another on this debt. Just as you might cancel this person who comes to see you, once you looked at this uh, situation and you saw that it was unsolvable or irreversible, you know that one way or another, either through bankruptcy or some other method, he's going to default on that debt. So the method we've chosen right now is default by stealth or fraud by stealth or counterfeiting by stealth, whatever you want to call it. But what it really means is trying every way possible to inflate and debase the currency so that we can pay the Chinese with far uh, undervalued dollars. In other words, every dollar that they loan us, we pay them back with 90 cents, then 85, then 70. And that's what we've chosen to do. That's our method of default. And we'll see how well it works in the future. But uh, as we near uh, full bankruptcy status, it gets more and more difficult to manage and more and more difficult to cover up. And, the countries of the world are starting to get uh, alarmed about it, as I said. So we have a solution all in mind for that. How are we going to fund this $2 trillion deficit this year, this, just this year? Uh, we propose to spend uh, $2 trillion more than we take in, and the Federal Reserve is just going to print that money, although that's kind of a misnomer they just created from thin air, which devalues every dollar that you carry around in your pocket and robs you of savings and things like that. They're, they're debasing your currency and robbing you just like they are the Chinese. But still, it's the only solution. It's expensive to run the world. Uh, I was in a meeting with, uh, with somebody last spring, just before the campaign started in 2008. This gentleman, we, uh, we were talking to him, me and a couple of other people, about uh, the wars and the role of the United States in the world. He said, look, we're a global power. Uh, we have to do these things. You know, we're, we're, this is how global power behaves now, I guess. But, you know, one of the pieces of bad news that we've learned since January, since the Obama administration was inaugurated, is that Democrats uh, are just as stupid as Republicans when it comes to running the economy. You may think that that is good news, but it really isn't. Uh, because, uh, you know, we thought there might be some hope for, uh, for fiscal sanity, but what they've just done, this is right on top of uh, the figures that I just gave you. This is what a bankrupt nation does when the budget is already set. Uh, they just voted a couple of days ago, a few days ago, $100 billion more for the wars for this year that we don't have. Uh, it's going to take $100 billion, they tell us, to rescue GM. This is money that doesn't exist. Now, think about that for a minute. $100 billion for the government to take over and own 70% of this corporation just two years ago, the biggest company in the world.
world.